All right. So this is what we worked on yesterday. Essentially, you got everything uh, put together. We changed up the background for this. One thing I didn't show you how to do, and I'm going to show you real quickly, is once you get your picture in there, all I'm doing is moving off all the text that um, was to be formatted. I'm going to reset this back to um, to the way it should be. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll even just delete away the whole thing. So you've created your picture, you've made your picture box. In this case I've got a blank picture box. And I'm going to drop in, place in <coughs> the um, edited picture that we have. Um, let's see. I think all I have is this one that we worked on, but that's cool. We'll use this one, even though it's still on the right side. We'll open it up. We'll place it in here. How? What's the easiest way I can resize it to get it to fit? Um, that up top. Up top. These two little buttons. Uh, fit proportionally tends to be one of the better ones. If you hit it this way, it'll scale it down even more. Um, from there, I can then place it where I need it to go, make it larger, make it smaller, all of that will be exactly the same. Here's how to match the color that's inside of your document to the color that you need for the, uh, the rest of your text frame. So for instance, right now I've got this picture, it's got that orange background. I actually need my picture box to be orange itself. So I've selected the picture frame, and I've done that with my little selection tool. I can then choose my eyedropper tool. What does the eyedropper do? selects the color. With the color selected, I'm going to hold down the Option key, click on, in this case, uh, this area down here, and it fills in the rest of my picture box with that solid color. And So this is how I was able to, um, to fill in this bottom portion down here as well. It's also the way I can set my text color or text frame boxes for any other type of frame that we're working on. Whatever I click on will fill in that particular color. If I do delete the picture, it'll still keep it that, uh, that orange color that we're working with. All cool for that? So that was the only thing that I didn't get to show you all yesterday when placing those inside there. Today, we're going to work on the other side, page two of our document. <clears throat> Remember, um, there are two sides to this, and so this will be considered the front side of what we're working on. We're only going to deal with one panel. Everything else is going to be left completely blank. Um, the, another thing I'm going to leave off is the printing part. For whatever reason, my computer is not connected to the printer, so hopefully I'll get that uh, squared away by Friday so I can show you it. I'm going to show you how to set up this front panel uh, and some of the fun things we're doing with this. First of all, notice that it's got a logo. This logo is saved as an EPS file, a vector file, and we're going to place it in here in its own little side. Uh, the slogan that they're using is Love the Ride, and so Love the Ride needs to be on there in some manner. Um, notice that it's kind of a papa bear. It's, it's the one thing that's got the most emphasis on here. Uh, what, are, what is the way that I'm using, excuse me, using emphasis for this particular layout? Huh? The sky, yeah, the colors in it. How am I making the sky, um, the values, yeah, so there's good contrast in it. How am I making the sky appear on here? What's that called? Clipping mask. Clipping mask, or I'm clipping it out in some way. It's almost like reverse type, almost. Um, I, instead of it being just a solid um, black color or a solid uh, red or orange color, I've got this sky showing through on those uh, particular letters as well. What's another type of contrast that I'm using? In love the ride. Oh, um, rides in all caps. Rides in all caps. So uppercase and lowercase. In this case, I'm emphasizing the word ride. Um, I'll give you some other options you can play around with. So these are different ways you can type out love the ride, and each one tends to emphasize one thing or the other. So in this case, I'm contrasting a uh, regular type with italicized type down here at the bottom. Notice love is in all caps, so love can be what's emphasized there. Same way for up here, love the ride. You've got an italicized, in this case, uh, sans serif type font. Look how it looks if all the letters are uh, all caps and the same size. Still readable, still, but everything in this case is, is being emphasized in this case. Um, love the ride. In this case, love is bigger, ride is smaller. 
And so that's where my emphasis plays. So th this is, a, as a graphic designer, is what you play around with. This is what you can change up and see how the message change uh, as you change that. So here's the first thing that we're going to do. I'm on part four. If you go to today's Moodle page, let's see if I can bring up Moodle. There it is. Scroll down to the bottom. I've added um, a couple of other things. First of all, here's the second part of the instructions that I just handed out to you. I've also got the open road picks, and these are a, um, a zip file. Let me download that one. And also the Harley Davidson logo. And this is an EPS file. Be careful when you download it that it's not opening up in preview. In my case, I'm telling it to just save the file. If it opens in preview, close it out, do not save it because it's going to try to convert it to a, uh, a PDF. I think that's what you problem you had last time, Gloria, is the reason why you couldn't see everything. Mm -hmm. It opened in preview and um, you didn't save it out. Let's see. Mine is in my downloads folder, so let's drag it to the desktop so we can see it. Same way for open road picks. <clears throat> so here's the Harley Davidson logo. And here, I'll open this one up. There we go. Open road picks. All this is is two pictures uh, that you can choose from of the open road. You can see I used this one last time, or you can use this one. Color schemes tend to change up how we're going to use it. First thing we're going to work with is the Harley Davidson logo. I'm going to drag it into Illustrator. We'll let Illustrator open this one up. What I need to do is to colorize this particular um, logo. What's Harley Davidson's colors? Orange. Yeah. Have you ever noticed it before? I'm not a Okay. I'm just going to do a quick Google search for Harley Davidson. I'll even go as far as logo. So when you see it, you know, it's not just orange, it's orange, black, and white. So they, um, and the, it's in a specific place within their logo. So we want to be able to use, uh, to change this logo to have the colors inside of it. As a graphic designer, sometimes um, corporations have a specific shade or a tint of orange that they want to use. Do you remember um, how you can choose specific colors? What uh, method of measurement or method to determine a color is being used? Like if I said, just give me orange, well, if I opened up my color picker, come on. You can see, man, I've got all kinds of shades of orange. How do I know exactly what the Harley Davidson orange is going to be like? Okay, I'll tell you exactly. If you look up here, there is color books that look like this. Do you remember what these are called? <laughs> Starts with a P. Uh, pen, uh, Pantone. Pantone. Pantone color books. Pantone is a, literally a company that sells colors. Mm -hmm. You can buy uh, ink that's pre-mixed uh, that's just that one color. Mm -hmm. So when Harley Davidson comes to you and says, hey, I need a logo printed on a t-shirt, mm -hmm. you go to the t-shirt company and say, all right, I need Pantone number, and it's got a number associated with whatever color that it is, and they can pull that specific color, or they can order it. These are very, very expensive to do, but if you're a brand and you want your brand consistent, this is, this is how they do that. So, for our logo, we don't just want to choose any color orange, we want to choose a specific color orange. And I already did the research for you, and I've listed it on, um, on here. They use Pantone 165C. Okay, here's how to find the Pantone colors in Illustrator. You can go up to Window, the very bottom under Swatch Libraries. Uh, where are they? Oh, here are Color Books. Here's your Pantone colors. Okay, so and you can see there's all different kinds of colors. If you see the uh, the the letter C or the letter U, that usually means Pantone coated or uncoated. Actually, I'm going to use the solid, coated, or uncoated. If it's a C, we're going to use coated. And it'll open up a little color picker that looks just like this. 
you can see there's all the colors that are associated with it. Have I lost y'all? Real simple, real easy. And that was under the window, <coughs> swatch libraries, whoops, color books. And this is where you can find those Pantone colors. When I hover over any one of these colors, you can see the name of it. So there's Pantone 188. There's Pantone 513. If I need to find a specific one at the very top, I can type in, in this case, 165, hit return, and it'll be highlighted. There it is right there, very small. There's 165. When you click on the color, it'll be added to your regular swatches palette off to the side. And there it is right there. See the little dot right there? That means it's a, a solid um, spot color. That spot right there means spot color. Anytime that I click on any one of these, it'll automatically add it to my colors to be used in my swatches palette. All good? I've got my orange loaded up. That's what I needed. So that's the color that we're going to be using. Here's the next thing. We're going to color in specific areas of our logo. When I click on my logo, you can see all the little, um, little vector points on it. I'm going to move it off the artboard and show you something unique about it. So if, why is it gray right here and white right here? What is this telling you about this logo? I'm off the space, but more importantly, what is it telling me about the colors that I have? Is this, um, is this a black and white logo, or is it just one color? Is it three colors? Why is it doing this? What am, black stayed solid so what's this it's off the page how do you know it's off the page see-through bingo exactly that's what I'm looking for it's transparent in other words um, there's no white in this area there's nothing in this area so it's not just a black and white logo that I have. It's a solid black logo. You can tell that by my fill color. What I'm doing is I need to fill in these transparent areas. That, that's important to remember once you start filling this in. You'll see why in just a second. So I've got my logo selected. I'm going to keep it off the page just so you can see it as I, as I work. With it selected, what we want to be able to do is to, uh, you've used the paint bucket in Photoshop, to just click on an area and quickly fill it in. Illustrator has a paint bucket per se uh, that you can work with as well. With it selected on, in, your, um, in your tools palette, it's usually located underneath the shape builder tool. Look for the live paint bucket tool. With the live paint bucket tool, I can now select a color. In this case, I'm going to choose my little orange color. And anywhere I click inside of this area, it's going to fill it in. So in this case, I'm filling it in with a vector object. Now this is a lot easier than having to redraw everything or having to, uh, to go back and uh, cut out specific shapes. Used to, that's what you had to do. If you wanted to fill in that area, you just had to redraw it and uh, do a lot of cutting. But using my live paint bucket, I'm easily or, or very quickly I can fill in this particular area. Notice when I click on this one, and I'm looking at the way the Harley Davidson area is, so this square also needs to be filled in with that color. So what do these letters need to be? What color do they need to be? White. They need to be white. If I didn't fill them in white, what color would they be? Gray and white? Hmm? No, It'd be transparent. It would be whatever is behind it. And I want it to be white, so that's why I'm showing you the transparent. Change your fill color. In this case, I'm going to click on the white swatch. Right now, it looks like nothing's happening, but that's because there's white behind it. Just clicking on. Now you can see it really work. Whatever is there. There are different tones. Uh, by default, the swatches, the white swatch, it, um, it's solid white. Just 100% pure white. <coughs> Good question, though. All right, so got it all filled in. So with this uh, already selected, the last thing I need to do 
since I'm using uh, the live paint bucket, it's kind of a special, um, special kind of vector. I need to expand what I'm working on. The only thing you need to remember, once you've finished, click on the word expand at the very top. This will then turn it into an editable uh, vector, vector path that you can move around and break apart. Any questions on that part? Relatively simple. All you're doing is opening it up, selecting it, and using your uh, live paint bucket to fill in the, uh, the color that you had selected. I'm going to save this and we'll say OK. I'm keeping it as an EPS so I don't even need to change the name of it. <coughs> we'll close it out as well. Next, let's jump back into our document that we're working on. In this case, I'm going to go back to normal mode. I'm going to drag this off. I'll recreate it as I'm working in. Let's choose one of the pictures to work with. Make a picture text frame. Pull it out all the way to the bleed. Why do we pull it out to the bleed? Why didn't I pull my picture? More is better. Why is it better? Because you don't want like white edges. Exactly. Yep. When you print it and when it's cropped down, it's going to give you that white edge. This will bleed over the edge. Perfect. Let's place in one of those documents. Open road pictures. Uh, and let's do the other one since we've already seen that one. Let's use this one. Hit open. Place it in here. Remember you can change it, resize it as necessary. Let's scale that down and see what it looks like. Oop, too small. Choose the other one. Yeah, something like that. Looks pretty good. All right. Let's place in our logo. So I'm going to make another text box, or excuse me, picture box. Drop it in. Now I don't remember where I saved my uh, Harley Davidson logo. If you never remember how to save it, here's a great little tip. There's always a search box at the very top up here. So I'm going to do Harley Davidson. Maybe get rid of the word Harley looking for the file name. Right now it's looking in the open road pictures. Let's look in all the Mac. There it is. Harley Davidson logo. Alright. We'll hit open. There it is placed in there. <coughs> for the um, the actual logo, I want it to be a specific size. So even though I made it in a, um, in a uh, this picture box, let's scale it down. I want the size to be two and a half inches by two and a half inches. How can I change my picture box to be a specific size? Where do I go to? Um, there's a thing up top. Up top, right here? Mm -hmm. There you go. Here's the width and the height of it. So let's type in specifically 2.5 by 2.5. Now I've got it perfect. Now I can resize it to fit, uh, there we go, the whole thing inside of it. So check out my picture. It's transparent where everything is transparent. It's white or color where everything needs to be a specific color. This is what Harley Davidson would require of you if you were actually working for them. And I'm going to leave the placement up to you. All right, got my open road in the back. I've got my picture. Let's load up some text and see what fun we can, uh, we can have with this one. What I want you to do is to create this negative clipping path kind of look out of whatever type that you uh, that you want to work with. So I'm going to choose my type tool. So let's type in love the road. And I'll make it bigger. Let's change up the font real quick. Um, impact is always a good one. Yeah, that'll work. Maybe the word love needs to be a little bit bigger. <coughs> change up the letting. Too close. See how quick I did that? Real quick. I've done it a thousand times before so I know exactly what I'm doing. But as soon as I get my text to be exactly the way I want it to be, and remember I can even change my text box and hold down shift and option. Let's say I wanted this to be my text. All good? I've got it set what I need to do is to convert this to its outlines. 
Now we did this in Illustrator. How did we do it in Illustrator? What did we look for to uh, convert type to outlines? Clip and map. Clip Say what? I'll go up to type. Is there anything on here that you would use to convert it to the vector points? Create outlines. Create outlines. There it is. What does create outlines do? Why do we use it? Yeah, that's part of it. More specifically, what does it do? It traces each letter. Traces each letter? Okay, you're, you're on it. It converts it to vector points. So it's not no longer editable type. It's an actual just drawn off vector object. Right now they're grouped together, so I'm even going to ungroup them. Um, under object, ungroup. Now you can see the actual vector point of, uh, let's, let's get that, there we go, the vector points. And I can move these around, I can edit them if I really wanted to. Uh, come on. There we go. Change it up, do stuff like that. This is going to come in handy when we create the negative space in the background. So the first thing I did, what did I do? I created the outlines, mm -hmm. then I ungrouped them. <clears throat> okay, here's the second step. We're going to create a white area in the background. All I'm going to do is make a picture box and I'm going to fill that picture box with really whatever color, in this case paper, tends to work out. And I need to make sure that my white area is behind all of this. So under Arrange, we'll send it backwards one more time so it's behind both of those. Have you lost, uh, lost you? Haven't done anything like this? Nothing you haven't done before. Here's the fun part. I'm going to select all the words, so love and the road, and also the white area in the background. I held down shift to select all of those. And we're going to cut out. We're going to punch through whatever's on top with whatever's below. To do this, we go to Object, down to... <coughs> um, Whoop, Pathfinder, and we want to, in this case, I believe it's subtract. Let's make sure I got the right one collect, selected. Yeah, let's make the reverse text. Yeah, subtract. And there we go. So now check out what I've got. It's no longer black text. It's actually the picture that's behind it. Do I need to do it again? <laughs> okay. Doesn't hurt to do it again. So I've got it all selected both of the words and the text in the background. Mm -hmm. Under Object, Pathfinder, Subtract is what we're doing. We're subtracting what's on top with what's below. Uh -huh. Part 7. Yeah, you're making the reverse text out of it. So when I back out and I place it up at the top here, let's go into preview mode. This is what it looks like. Of course it's, uh, it's just solid white and you're seeing the, uh, the picture behind it right now. Uh, what I did for my text, <coughs> notice that it goes from a solid white kind of to a, a gradient type fill. This was a special effect that I added to it. So I'm going to select it again. The effect that I chose, and here's your little effects button, mm -hmm. was called a directional feather or gradient feather. And I think it was a directional feather. This is where playing around comes in handy. Looks like a, uh, yep, looks like I may have gotten off wrong. Let's try a gradient feather. There it is. Gradient feather is what we want. With gradient feather, I can choose where I want it to start and stop. So you can see where it's dark here. If I move it over, it becomes darker or lighter. Here's the stopping point. And you can change the opacity of it. Uh, based on this. Let's say I want it to go up and down. So I'm going to change the angle. Come on, negative 90. So I want Love the Road to look like this. We'll say OK. Let's go back into preview mode. So now I've got something that looks more like this. Pretty cool? Yep, riding on up into the clouds. This uh, little 
um, cutout technique will work for anything, any type of object that you drew. <clears throat> so for instance, see how I've got this area kind of circular cut out in the bottom? All I did was I chose a circle or an ellipse. Mm -hmm. I drew off the ellipse the way I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And then I selected both this and this, and I did that subtract method. Mm -hmm. Object, path, subtract, and it cuts it out like a cookie cutter. And so that's just a great way of easily adding a curve or um, um, a bend or, or a, an object, a, a shape, into the um, object that you created. If you do want to change the color, so if I don't like it white, let's say I wanted it to be um, to match this green or to match the blue. Let's grab my eyedropper. What do I hold down to pick up a color? Hold down Option. Pick it up. Of course, it's a very dark blue. Let's drag it off to the side. Let's try again. Let's try this lighter blue. Lighter blue or even a light blue down here. Put it back on top. It would look something like this. Kind of difficult to read. Not enough contrast. We'll talk about that. Ooh, I can even pick up the Harley Davidson red or orange. Yeah, exactly. That's what that looks like as well. All cool? So, <coughs> add some reverse type to um, to your to your layout, and like I said, how you want to lay out the the text, I'll leave it completely up to you. The very last thing that you're going to add to it is the word uh, 2014 catalog, I believe. Yeah, 2014 catalog, and it can be placed in here as well. Now you see, there's lots of different ways I can play around with this. I've in this case, I've turned the text to the side. You can do that. You can have it stacked on top of each other. You can change where you want to place the catalog. So I could place 2014 catalog right there. Everything still stays in that nice center alignment uh, that I'm working with. All up to you. You can see here's more options that I've chosen from when working for this one. When you are finished, uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go over the printing features just yet, but go ahead and save this as a InDesign file and um, on Friday or later you can print it off and we'll cut it out and have it folded up to turn in. All good? That's all we're working on today. So if you can get this done, you're free to go or you can uh, work on the other things as well. I'll stop recording.